guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this 8 foot bullwhip. This bullwhip is made almost entirely out of paracord, probably 99% paracord, and it used 450 feet of paracord, and I just bought 550 parachute cord off eBay. I just bought cheaper stuff and paid about £2.70 for 100 feet of paracord. Making a bullwhip is a really great project for people who don't have many tools but have got a lot of time on their hands and also want to create something that's really good and high quality but then don't want to spend loads of money on expensive tools. The only tool that you're going to need for this project is a clamp or a vise or something to hold down the whip while you're working on it so you could just get someone to sit on it or put some weights on it. You can also buy higher quality paracord which costs about 5 or £6 pounds per 100 feet but I'm not really sure what the difference is. This bull whip is a 12 plate, 3 belly core, shot loaded whip. If you don't know what that means, 12 plate means that it's got 12 strands of paracord on the outer plate and then 3 belly core means that it's got 3 different bellies inside it which are the layers that make the taper of the whip that means it gets thicker to thinner and then shot loaded core means that it's got weights in the first half of the whip which means that it cracks much louder. From the very back of the handle all the way down to the end of the thong, which is the braided part of the whip, it's about 8 feet long, just under 8 feet long, and then to the very end of the fall and the cracker, it's just over 9 feet long. I've designed this whip to crack very, very loudly, so it's very long, very heavy, and it's got a massive taper. This means that it starts off quite thick and then ends very, very thin. So now let's get started and see how you make the bullwhip. So obviously since this is a paracord bullwhip, the first thing you're going to need to do is get some paracord and you're going to need lots of it. To make a bullwhip this thick, this long and with this taper, it took about 450 feet of paracord. So I'd recommend getting about 500 feet of paracord just in case you go over. As I said earlier, I ordered the cheapest stuff off eBay and I also ordered the colours that I want. So for the inner layers, I'm just going to be using normal black paracord. And then for the very outer layer, I'm going to be using a combination of yellow and black. So once I've got all the paracord ready, it's time to start with the handle of the bullwhip. For this handle, I'm using a piece of fiberglass tent pole because it's quite lightweight and it's also very rigid and strong and it flexes very slightly to give you a bit more power in the whip. The handle that I'm choosing is just over a foot long so that it gives you a lot of leverage against the whip. Now it's time to start to make the core of the whip. For this I'm just going to take a piece of paracord which is going to act for the very centre of the whip. If my handle was just over a foot long then I want to make this piece of paracord just under 7 feet long so then both added together is 8 feet long. Now taking a lighter also matches melt the frayed end of the paracord where you cut it so that it doesn't all fray. I suggest not pressing the molten ball together with your fingers because then it burns your fingers like I found out just now. So now the paracord's got a flat solid end that's not going to come undone. Now I'm going to take some super glue and put some of it in the end of the fiberglass tent pole. I then push a couple of centimetres of the string into that hole and then let the super glue set and hold it in place. Then put super glue around the edge of the string and push it up against the end of the fiberglass tent pole that will hold it very securely in place. Leave all of the glue to dry or set and then pull it very hard just to check that it's very secure and it is. Now that the paracord's secure in the handle, now measure down from the end of the handle all the way down the string of the paracord about three and a half feet. I then take the string and clamp it in my bench vise, so you could also just use clamps or get someone to hold it down for you. And then I start to wrap some insulation tape or PVC insulation tape all the way down to that mark which I left at three and a half feet. It's going to help to stiffen that first half of the core. Now that's done, it's time to build up some of the weight in the first half of the whip. This is called shot loading the whip. In other bullwhip tutorials, what I've seen people do is hollow out the core paracord, take out all of the inner strands and then load the first half of the whip with metal BBs for a BB gun, but I don't really have any of them and also I want to make my whip a bit heavier. So I'm going to be using this lead fishing line. You can pretty much use anything that's metal and flexible and bends really easily and I've also seen other people use this stuff called ball and chain, which is basically a long thin piece of string with lots of metal balls attached around it. So I've got four pieces of the lead fishing weight here. The first one is one and a half feet, and then the next one is two and a half feet, and there's another one of two and a half feet, and then there's a final one of three feet long. 
As you can see, this lead fishing weight bends very easily and it doesn't resist at all to flexing. This is important so that it doesn't slow down the whip. So now I'm going to take one of the two and a half foot sections and start to tape it down where the piece of strip power cord starts to attach to the fiberglass temple. Once it's been tied on at the start, I then lay it down so that it's all in line and it's going straight down the whip and then tie it on at the very end to the core. Then using the other two and a half foot length of lead fishing weight, I fold it in half and tie it on at the same start place and then use the exact same method to tape it down. All the other pieces of lead with fishing weight are secured down in a very similar way. Once they've all been taped down in their respective places and they're tapering quite nicely, I'm going to then take it over to my bench vise, tighten up the vise and hold it in the right place and then use insulation tape just to wrap around the whole thing and hold it in securely. This is what the whip looks like once all of the lead has been covered in the insulation tape. It's got a really decent weight behind it and it tapers quite nicely already. Now to add a little bit more stiffness between the transition from the handle to the core of the whip, I'm going to add some of this flexible wire. If you do choose to pick wire, it's very important that you get a type of wire that when you bend it, it springs back and doesn't just stay in the same place. This means that when you crack the whip, it's going to bend and then spring back instead of just bending and staying in the same place and slowing down the whip motion. Here I've cut sections of the gardening wire and I've got two sections at one foot, two sections at two foot and one section at three foot. It's then taped down in a very similar way to the way that I did the lead fishing weight apart from I start just before the end of the handle so that it makes a nice transition between the handle and the core of the whip. Then as usual I give the whole thing a layer of PVC insulation tape. Now as you can see the whip has got a much larger taper than it did earlier. Also the transition is much more solid and it bends much more evenly. So now the core of the whip is complete and it's time to move on to the first of the bellies. This is the part where you actually get to braid together some paracord and then create the taper in the whip even more. So here I've measured out all of my black paracord which I'm going to be using. So here I've got two strands at 20 foot and then one strand at 14 foot of paracord. So the next step, if you've bought the right paracord, this inner stuff should be able to poke out. You want to pull that all the way out, but with the longer sections, it's quite difficult to do it by hand. So what I like to do is I like to tie it to a door handle or something and then just pull on the outer sheath for the inner core and then pull it really hard until it completely slides out. This does seem a bit wasteful at first, but it's actually pretty much essential if you want to braid the whip properly. And if you don't get the paracord, it means that all of the layers are very stiff and don't bend evenly at all. As I just said, this process is called gutting or decoring the paracord, and it will mean that it can bend much more easily. With each strand that you gut, you then want to find the middle like this. Once you get to the very middle, you want to slide your fingers along just to one side for about half a foot and then tie a knot. Do this with every piece of paracord no matter what length and this is it again. Just go to the very middle like this by closing the two halves together then sliding your fingers all the way down until you reach the end and then go to the very end and grab it with your fingers and then slide your hand along about half a foot and then tie another knot. This means that both strands either side of the knot are both, not both the exact same length so that when you're dropping them further down the whip it will taper much more easily and not just have a sudden end to the weave. If you don't understand that, it will be explained a bit more further on, so it doesn't matter. Using one of the 20 foot strands and the only 14 foot strand, I'm going to put the two knots together and then wrap it around the tent pole like this. Make sure that when you're doing this, one side is overlapping the other side and that both of the knots are centered around the back of the fiberglass tent pole. I then take my other 20 foot strand and give slack to the loop which I've got in here and then pull the 20 foot strand all the way through until it reaches the knot. I then pull one of the sides down to the left and one of the sides down to the right so that then I've got three strands on one side and then three strands on the other side. So now I'm going to start my weaving or plaiting or plating or whatever you want to call it. I'm basically just tying the paracord together. The strand at the very furthest back is the top right hand strand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it around the back of all of the other strands. On the other side I'm going to take it underneath two of the three strands and then bring it over the last strand. It was kind of hard to see on that side so you'll be able to see it more easily on this side. 
So we just used the right hand strand, so now we're going to use the top left hand strand and I'm going to pull it all the way around the back, underneath two of the strands on the right hand side and then over the other one. I then put it back into position, slide everything back up and pull it all tight again. That strand that we just used on the top left has now taken its way all the way around the back and now it is on the bottom left. So since I just used the strand from the left hand side, I'm now going to use the strand from the right hand side and I'm always going to be taking the top strand, so the strand that's furthest back. I then yet again take it around the back just like I did with the other strands and then underneath two strands and then over one of them and then pull it back into position and pull everything tight again. I'm going to continue this exact same weave for a while until all of the strands start to become shorter. Remember if you just use a strand from the left hand side you're then going to use one from the right hand side and it's going to take it, you're going to take the very top strand so the strand that's least being used and then you're going to take it round the back underneath two and then over one. This can start to take a really really long time so I prefer to do this while watching TV and sitting comfortably on a sofa so I've just got it clamped up in this portable vise. Now one of the strands of paracord has started to become really short and I'm going to weave until that strand comes on the very bottom and I'm about to use it next and I'm basically just going to take it round the back and wrap it round the whip. There's only about 5 or 6 inches left of this strand and when I'm wrapping it around the whip I need to make sure that I'm pulling it very tight. I then just clamp it up in the vise with the rest of the whip and just continue to plait normally over the top of it. But what you'll notice is on one side it's only got two strands because that one's not being used anymore. So I'm going to use that side exactly the same as I was using it normally and I'm just going to take it round the back under two over one. But then when I'm using the other side I'm going to take it round the back and then under one and then over one because there's only two strands left. Then I'm just going to repeat this pattern and use the side with two strands normally under two over one and the side with three strands around the back, under one and over one. Make sure that while you're braiding the whip you're repeatedly pushing everything up and pulling it tight to get out all of the gaps. As you continue to braid ignore the dropped strand and it will slowly start to get covered up by woven paracord. Once it's too short to fit in the vice jaws, just get a little bit of insulation tape to tape it down to keep it out of the way. So as you can see I'm continuing to braid normally even after I've gone over the dropped strand and I'm continuing with the normal pattern of under two over one on one side and then under one over one on the other side. I'm going to carry on with this pattern until another strand starts to get too short to braid with. As you can see this strand from the other side has now started to become very short and I'm going to drop it just like I did with the other strand. I'm going to wrap it around the core of the whip and then tie it down with a bit of insulation tape just as I did earlier. Now as you can see I've only got two strands on each side and this is really simple to braid with. You simply take the strands around the back as normal but instead of on one side going under two over one you're going to go under one over one on both sides. So to explain it more simply, you're basically going to have two strands on each side and as normal you're going to take the very back strand from whichever side you just haven't used. So say I just braided with the right hand side, I'm going to take the left hand side strand, I'm going to take it round the back and then up through the middle of the two strands which are on the other side, then round over and pull it tight. Then just continue to braid like that until all of your strands start to become really short. So one of my four remaining strands has become too short to work with anymore so I'm going to wrap it around the core and tape it down just like I did with the other strands when I dropped them. However now that this one's been wrapped around and taped down there's no other strands to weave with because you can't weave with only one strand on one of the sides. So since I can't weave anymore I need to tie off all of the strands and so I'm going to take the next shorter strand and then wrap it around in the opposite direction just like I did with the last one but in the opposite direction and then tape it down at the end. And then take the next shorter strand and wrap that around and then tie it off at the end and then do it with the very final strand and tie that off at the end. 
This is what the whip looks like once we've created the first belly and I have to say the braided stuff looks really really cool. You can see already that there's a really large taper between the end of the handle and then the end of the whip. So that's all for this part of one of the tutorial, it's getting quite long so I'm going to split this up into another part so stay tuned next week to see the second part of the tutorial to see how to make this bullwhip. Once the video has been uploaded, which it will be uploaded next week, then the link will be in the description down below. Also if you did enjoy this video, I put a lot of time and effort into making both the whip and the tutorial, the editing takes a really really long time, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and also post a comment saying what I could improve on.